Janet and the children, fellow mourners in your respective capacities, my fellow colleagues, the permanent secretaries, We rise up here in deep pain to pay tribute to Keith Muhakanizi, who was our colleague and a friend. I personally stand here on my own behalf and on behalf of all permanent secretaries, but also on behalf of all accounting officers and the entire public service in general to convey our deepest condolences to the wife, children, relatives, and friends of Keith over this great unexpected loss. Indeed, you have lost the pride and joy and the pillar of support from whom much was still expected. May the Lord comfort you and grant him eternal peace. We gather here in sorrow and disbelief because although Keith was battling with cancer for some time, it seemed like he was on top of the disease by his looks. He was full of life. It is therefore very difficult for us to comprehend now that someone in such vitality and such spirit has departed this earth. It is very sorry and very sad indeed. Case had a good record of service spanning for a period of 41 years. He was first appointed as the economist in 1982 and he rose through the ranks to become a permanent secretary and secretary to treasury in the year 2013. A position he occupied for eight years. Then he was transferred to the office of the prime minister as permanent secretary in July 2021, where he served till his death. He served with dedication, passion, and had the courage to speak out honestly and directly, a character that is rare among most public servants of today. He was an asset to the public service because of his knowledge, his courage, his consciousness, decisiveness, and good time management. Indeed, we shall miss Keith as a public service. Keith was not afraid to confront wrongdoing and to speak hard truth. The service will therefore miss him greatly. Some of you may be wondering, then how did the Iron Sheet Circus came up? when he was the permanent secretary in that office. Keith had seen that circus coming. And he had even been to my office a few months before this happened. I remember one time, one afternoon, he came to my office. He had had top management in his office. And he came and told, he actually came accusing me of not inducting the ministers. He came saying, my, he used to call me my boss. My boss, did you induct the ministers? I told him, Keith, I did. Only at that time you were in Turkey, but the ministers were inducted. Then he told me one thing. I've been quarreling with them in today's top management. The ministers are everywhere. 
They are in stores, they are in procurement, they are in accounts, they are in nature, they are everywhere. So, what do I do? I've come here to report myself. Because if you hear anything, you know that I've disagreed with the ministers today. And he said, I've warned them, these stores are going to cause them problems. And indeed, I think like a month and a half passed, and this problem came. And actually, when the problem came, he, he called me and told me, didn't I predict so? I said, yeah, you predicted. And we actually took it lightly. We thought it would uh, come to pass. But it continued. So I called him when he was in Milan. I told him, Keith, this thing is making government become uglier. What do we do to cool it down? He told me, you know, those of you who knew Keith, he didn't miss his words. He just told me back, I want those ministers, let them take uh, responsibility. I've already written my statement. When I come back, we shall discuss the way forward. But I propose for now, we need to restructure the office of the prime minister. I told him indeed that's true, because the number of scandals have been happening at that office. So we therefore agreed that when he comes back, he should write a cabinet memo proposing this restructuring of this office. And we talked and agreed that we should actually let the office concentrate on its role of coordination and supervision and then implementation is taken elsewhere. But unfortunately, he didn't come back so that we effect this. But I hope Your Excellency, the person you will appoint next, will follow up this. And I pray that you do appoint somebody with courage like Keith. Because this office has a lot of challenges and if you appoint a soft person, we shall continue with these challenges. Keith also taught us the meaning of responsibility. Keith was a very responsible person, and he always took responsibility. And he always encouraged all accounting officers to take responsibility. Keith was somebody who never participated in any illegality. If you rush to Keith, all accounting officers will bear me witness. And you have an emergency that requires funding. And let me say this emergency needs environment. I was one of those culprits running to Keith all the time because of the office I was occupying as state house controller. You would show him that you have an emergency and this emergency requires environment. Then he would ask you, do you know the law? And then you say, yes, I know the law. Then he would say, is it within the 10% for environment? Then you tell him no. Then he would tell you, if you must do it, you go ahead and do it. But when the auditor general knocks at your door, don't refer to me. <laughs> so he was never ready to do anything. Even when you came with directives from the president, Keith would require that you put everything in writing. So Keith was very principled and we shall miss Keith in that vein. Personally, I started 
interacting with Keith closely in the year 2013 when he became the PS and ST in the Ministry of Finance. He was of great support and this enabled me to deliver the expectations of my office. And because of the demands of my office then, when I was State House Controller, I frequented this office many times. And as I told you yesterday at yesterday's vigil, he never had kind words for me. In the beginning, every time I went, he would end up quarreling. But he would stand his ground. If he has no money, he would tell you point blank that you go, I don't have the money. Mm -hmm. However many threats I would also pose, because I would come in the name of the president. Keith would say, my dear, let's go to the president and we explain. Call the president, let him talk to me. He would give you all the scenarios. But I also never gave up. Would quarrel, I would go back, would quarrel, he would quarrel. And eventually, in those quarrels, we became friends because we realized we needed each other. For me to deliver my office, I needed him. And for him also to be in his office, he also needed to facilitate me. So we struck a deal, and now I would take my problems, and then he would say, look here, let's do like this. If I give you funds for this quarter, if I front road for you, promise me that you won't come until the end of the quarter. Sometimes I would meet his request, sometimes I would fail. But because he had realized, he one time told me that, do you know the biggest, the most, he called them the worst, I think the most difficult offices in this country? He said it is the job of being a, a, a secretary to the treasury, but also of being a state house controller. So because of that, we inculcated a friendship. We both knew we are having very stressful jobs where we needed to deliver. Things were beyond our control, but we strived on. And I thank God that we managed to deliver. I have no doubt that if kids had been given more time by God. He was going to organize the office of the prime minister and put it to the required standards. So, and I know people at the office of the prime minister will miss Keith. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, the Deputy Speaker, the right Honorable Prime Minister, colleagues and ministers, religious leaders, head of public service and secular to cabinet, the bereaved family of the late great man, Keith Mwakanizi, permanent secretaries, Fellow mourners, ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency and the fellow mourners, we are here today, as everybody who has spoken before testifies, to remember a man who dedicated his working life to serving the Republic of Uganda, particularly through the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Keith Mwakanizi joined the public service in June 1982 as an economist and deployed to the then Minister of Planning and Economic Development. Due to his excellence performance, coupled with his good core technical and behavioral competences, 
Keith rose through the ranks up the level of permanent secretary, secretary to treasury, a position he held up to the time he was deployed to the office of the prime minister as permanent secretary in July 2021. Your Excellency, even when he transferred Keith, he remained with us. He would hardly spend a week without coming to, to my office to give me some guidance. Minister, this should be this, this should be this. And I'm sure if, the, my, if his replacement was to, to talk, he would testify. He also would go to uh, the new permanent secretary and secretary to treasury to share some concerns when he saw that things were not moving well. Him, together with Professor Emmanuel Tumsimire Mutebire, may, the rest, may his story rest in peace, the former Bank of Uganda governor, among others, are arguably the grandparents of Uganda's modern economy. The endured sacrifices to rebuild Uganda we are a bit off today because the reforms they have crafted and the service they rendered to this country. Your Excellency, as you may know, Mr. Mohakanizi spearheaded a number of reforms, both in economic and public financial management, which have helped the government to foster economic growth, attract investments, reduce poverty, improve budget the transparency, and restore. The Right Honourable Deputy Speaker of Parliament and your wife. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The Prime Ministers Emeritus in our midst, uh, John Patrick Obama Bawazi and Dr. Ugunda the former Chief Justice, other dignitaries, the church, family, Janet and the children, Dennis, friends, good morning. I'm here in two respects. Um, as family, Janet is my sister. I follow her, and in that regard, I'm um, here on behalf of my father and mother and the other members of the family, but also I shared another space with him, service in government, different dockets, but complementary. I want to relay our condolences to Janet and the entire family for the loss of Keith, who was their family pillar. Keith's story has been told and told by many people from their perspectives, and um, mine is as follows. For normal folks, the ordinary people, I think our expression is a single track, a single lane, but for Keith, I think he was a dual carriageway kind of person. He achieved the ordinary things of life, but he was not content with those. And these are raising up, going to school, uh, getting a family and children and friends, all those he achieved. But beyond those, he also had great impact through the other fields of his service, which have left 
great impact. And I want to speak to those uh, so that I wind up in the interest of time. I'll start with uh, being human. Keith was human, he was humane, he was a people person, he lifted and touched the hearts of many people in his official work, but also in social circles. His outer disposition and demeanor of being seemingly tough would be misleading. Beneath the toughness was a very soft side and large heart. Keith was always in a hurry, hurry to achieve, hurry to finish business. In speech, in actions, seeking results, keeping time. That was vintage Keith, and he understood too well the value of time well used for effect. Keith served the country and community with distinction. He exhibited exceptional focus, purpose, passion, and dedication to his job. He studied, worked, and lived economics. His contribution in the revival and growth of our economy is well acknowledged. Keith was very confident. He exuded immense confidence and conviction in what he believed in and was able to articulate his beliefs candidly and boldly. He was not one to grumble under the table. He would openly express his thoughts. Leadership. Keith provided leadership throughout his lifetime. He led from the front and understood too well the value of teamwork as well as delegation and trusting subordinates to achieve results as testified by his workmates. He was also decisive. Leadership is about decision making. Even if popular in some instances, unpopular rather. Keith was consistent in his convictions and values. He was the same yesterday, today, and the next day. And this made him predictable. Keith was loud but well-meaning. He did everything with a bang, speech, walk. I'm told even dancing strokes, according to his sisters the other day. Quite often, he would be mistaken for being tough and rude but he always meant well. Whether you agreed with him or not, he would leave a lasting impression. He lived a, a worthy life of immense impact and will certainly be greatly missed. For the children, you have no choice but to grow fast, to assume responsibility, to look after and not up to your mother. Keith has left you everything to start you off on that tough journey. A good upbringing, a good education, a good and big name, a huge brand. He also left you a large social network. If you can't grow it, at least preserve it. Therefore, it is well, God will keep you. I want to thank you, Your Excellency, for identifying and tasking and entrusting Keith with the responsibility over the years. I also thank you for acknowledging his contribution and giving him an honorable and befitting send-off. I thank friends and relatives who have been with him throughout his lifetime till the end. Thank you for being truly loyal to him. I also want to thank our relatives from both from my mother's side and from my father's side. Uncle Benon Mwesige there, thank you for coming to follow Janet in this tough, tough time. Janet, lastly, and the children, Dudu, Pepe, and Noah, for the good time we spent with Keith as family, 
for caring for him when he became unwell until the end. Come, come, as your name uh, says, God will be with you. And I pray that God gives you the strength and courage to handle the weight of loss of your dear one. May the soul of Keith rest in eternal peace.